Hello again, everyone. I'm Ken Whiting, host of Paddle Tales, and this week we are going to talk about how to choose the right kayak. Because there are a lot of kayaks to choose from, and the dis decision can be overwhelming. But it really comes down to what type of paddling are you going to be doing, and are you more comfortable sitting inside or sitting on top of the kayak? Uh, but before we get into it, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, because there's lots more tips coming your way. It's also worth checking out the Paddle Tales series. It's a really cool web series here on Paddle TV where we go to some of the world's most incredible destinations and share some amazing paddling adventures along the way. Uh, the, there's a link in the description box uh, down below. So the question of how to choose the right kayak. Well, there's a, a few different decisions you need to make and we're going to start with the most important one is do you want a sit inside or do you want to sit on top kayak? Now, they both obviously have their pros and cons. A sit on top. A sit on top kayak is very comfortable because your legs aren't stuck in any one position. Uh, you're free to move around and you can even have some sit on tops, even have seats or sitting positions that can be manipulated. They can be raised or lowered. By having a higher sitting position, your legs are, can be in a more comfortable position. There's also the fact that a sit on top kayak can act like almost like a big air mattress, a pool air mattress. You can hop off, you can hop on, you can treat it like a floating dock that, that can be paddled. It can't swamp unless you compromise the hull itself. Uh, it can be flipped, rolled back up, and it's not going to swamp and sink. There's trapped air inside the sit on top kayak that prevents that from happening. To paddle a sit on top kayak is to be wet because you're exposed to all the elements. And for that reason, sit on top kayaks aren't as good for paddling in cooler water, cooler conditions, but they are great for paddling in, in warmer conditions, in, in warm water, um, because they're cooler. Sit and side kayaks are uh, great for rougher water typically, because you can stay protected from wind and waves. If you use to sit an inside kayak that has a skirt, it seals the kayak up and doesn't let water inside. You're being inside the kayak, you're, you've got more, typically, you have more control over the kayak as well. It's kind of like a sit on top is wearing a flip-flop where uh, you're, you know, you're standing on top, you're on top of that platform where a sit inside is a shoe and you've, you, it's wrapped your foot, you have a lot more control. Um, the same thing goes with kayaks. Sit inside kayaks, you typically have a lot more boat control. So for more aggressive paddling, sit inside kayak is a better option. Ultimately, it comes down to when choosing a sit on top or sit inside kayak, um, what are you most comfortable with? If you would like the boat control and are willing to sit inside a kayak, um, then a sit, on, a sit inside kayak is a great option. If not, if you'd like to have the comfort, the, uh, the non-claustrophobic feeling of sitting on top of a kayak, then that, uh, that is the, uh, the direction you should go. So once you've decided on a sit on top or a sit inside, then you need to make some other decisions. First one being what's more important. Is it more important to have speed or is it more important to be stable? It depends on the type of kayaking you're doing. If you're trying to cover long distances, if that's the kind of trip you like to go on, then you're gonna want a kayak that's narrower and longer. If you want a kayak that's more stable, that you're less worried about flipping, then you want a kayak that's wider. It's really width that this impacts. The wider a boat is, generally speaking, the more stable it is. The narrow, narrower it is, the faster it will travel through the water. Now, another decision that also relates to the shape of the kayak is what's more important, speed or maneuverability. A kayak that is shorter is more maneuverable. It can turn a lot more freely. A kayak that is longer tracks a lot better, stays on course and will go, uh, typically go a lot faster in a straight line. So if speed is of the utmost, utmost importance to you, you're gonna to wanna to choose a kayak that's narrower and longer. 
if stability and maneuverability is more important to you or, or one or the other, then you're going to want a kayak that's wider or uh, shorter. Another consideration that a lot of people don't uh, give is to transportation of the kayak. How are you going to transport this thing? And if you don't have a trailer or a car that can take a long kayak, like a sea kayak, then you should probably shouldn't be looking at a sea kayak. You need to be looking at, or a touring kayak, you need to be looking at a shorter kayak. Or if you don't have the capability to take any kayak on the top of your vehicle, then you need to be looking at a kayak that can be transported inside your vehicle. And that's an inflatable kayak or a folding kayak. There's tons of options out there now, depending on what your transportation capabilities are. You may have to spend a little bit more money on a folding kayak if you don't have uh, you know, a, uh, an easy way to move it around. And you may have to deal with a slight drop in performance that an inflatable kayak delivers. Um, if you don't have room on top of your vehicle. But great thing about those kayaks is you throw them into your car and also storage at home. If you have a small apartment, you don't have a place, a backyard or a garage to put a, a big kayak, they can go in your closet. Of course, another key factor, and in many cases, a deciding factor is the cost. And kayaks can range from, you know, as little as $300, or $400 to, in fact, the most expensive kayak just was released on Kickstarter this week. It's about a $10,000 kayak. Now the difference, there's a lot of differences between a $300 and a $10,000 kayak. The $10,000 kayak is really a piece of art almost. It's com uh, made completely out of carbon and it is uh, handcrafted. It is beautiful it you know it's a feather it, it's very light and easy to to carry around um, whereas a three hundred dollar kayak is going to be made out of a polyethylene a pla basically a plastic kayak it's not going to have um, great customization options it's not going to have very good sitting uh, seat or outfitting very simple you get what you pay for um, typically when you pay more for a kayak you're getting two things you're getting uh, better materials uh, that it's made from and better outfitting, which translates to more comfort and more customization options. Depends on the type of, of paddling you're going to be doing. If you're just going to be going out for uh, a casually, a casual uh, uh, paddle at the cottage um, or down at the river or lake a couple times a year, then you really don't need uh, a high end kayak, something uh, made a plastic kayak is great. Plastic also deals with abuse very well. If you're going to drag that kayak um, to the water or across rocks or, you know, that's why most whitewater kayaks are, are made of plastic. Um, they take a lot of abuse for many years. Uh, if you're going to be spending more time paddling, you may want to invest in a kayak that has better outfitting. You will want to invest in a kayak that has better outfitting, a more comfortable seat, um, and even options for upgrades for fishing accessories or, you know, cup holders or, you know, storage compartments. It, uh, the sky's the limit with kayaks these days. Um, so it's a good idea to establish your budget from the outset and do yourself a favor. Don't try a kayak that's outside your budget because once you do, you won't want to go back. <laughs> I guarantee you. Stick with testing, demoing kayaks within your budget. And that's actually uh, a final point that's worth making is that a lot, uh, you can go to the local big box store and pick up a kayak. And uh, they have very affordable kayaks there. What they don't offer is the opportunity to, to demo, to try kayaks before you buy. And a lot of paddling specific shops most paddling specific shops offer that opportunity take a boat out for a test drive and uh, if you like it great you can try a couple different boats sometimes they even have demo days where they have all the boats out and you can try a whole bunch of different boats it's worth doing if you're if you expect to spend a lot of time paddling if this is something you're going to take on as a you know as a, a long-term uh, recreational activity spend the time 
try out a bunch of boats, find what works best for you, find what you're most comfortable with and what you're most comfortable in and, uh, and go from there. There's a great secondhand market available. So when you, if you do get a kayak and you outgrow its, uh, its characteristics, you want to upgrade, move to something else. Typically speaking, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to find someone to buy it and, uh, and move on to a, a better or different kayak. Well, that's about it for, uh, for this tip. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have, please do give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And do be sure to check out the Paddle Tales series on YouTube. The link is in the, in the description box. We got lots more tips, lots more Paddle Tales episodes coming your way. So stay tuned.